all starving, or a lot of us are starving. You feel like um, what we're starving for, if I understand right, is a, a, a direct experience of ourselves from a non-narrative, um, not a conceptual, not understand ourselves from the conceptual mind, but understanding us from ourselves from a direct experience, and in that, there's a sense of a non-striving or enoughness. Is that the? Yeah, these are all words, and yeah. so it's its own narrative. You realize yeah. the irony of that. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I guess what I'm saying is that uh, you know it's an adventure. This love affair is an adventure, and each one of us has certain you know um, karmic threads that invite us to investigate the world or contribute to the world in different ways. And the idea is to, uh, well, I'll just speak very personally. For a long time after I got exposed to meditation when I was about 22 years old at MIT of all places, so Otto and I have this long karmic trajectory uh, woven into MIT. So, you know, I, I uh, for many, many years after that, even though I got a PhD from MIT, uh, I kept asking myself, what is my job on the planet with a capital J? In other words, what would I love so much I'd pay to do it? And that's how MBSR came about. I mean, that was in some sense the, the one solution to that koan. And I feel like that may have application for all of us in the sense that, like, what are we doing here? Well, we still have time to be here. And I like to joke, you know, I do this all the time. I mean, check your watch and, you know, it's, it's just amazing. It, it's now again. <laughs> it just, my God. It's not even 10 to now. It's now. <laughs> so what, what as, a, as a fully embodied, intelligent, beautiful, love fest of a being with much more right with you than we, as we say to our patients, than is wrong with you, no matter what your narrative is about what's wrong with you, even what your doctors say about what's wrong with you. Okay, well, well what, what are we going to do with this now? And I think at least the people in this room and the people that the, in the other rooms at this conference, we're doing it. We are doing it. And we're also being it. And that's why this conference may be very different from many other conferences, is that we don't need to have the difference between being and doing explained to us. We understand the interconnection of those two. And it is embodied in virtually every single one of us, even though, of course, we forget all the time, so we have to remind ourselves by checking, oh yeah, okay, drop one more time. And from that perspective, um, where is it? What do you what do you feel like the use of the mind is in terms of developing um, plans and projects and books and things that require um, a different quality of mind? Or do you feel like you can do all those from that moment to moment awareness? Well, I mean, when you know your mind, you know what it's capable of, or you maybe don't know what it's capable of, and you can rest in a kind of uncertainty or doubt, and then listen very deeply to what wants to emerge. I mean, I think Pico Iyer said it very beautifully about his work, you know. He needs hours and hours of silence just to do his job. But what is his job? With a capital J. He's found his own unusual way to, okay, well, every one of us is finding our own unusual way. It's not that unusual, actually. What it is is sane. Okay? And in this era where you know, we just hear time and time again uh, about the seductive and addictive elements of this and how the effect that it does have on our frontal cortex and capacity to actually focus or to you know, drop in deep into even deep thought that works for us, uh, we're kind of like mm, frogs, all of us collectively in that proverbial pot of water where we were put in at a low temperature, the heat is on big time underneath the pot, and we're not kind of noticing that we're kind of boiling or reaching the boiling point. And we, so we can't live 
with these devices and we can't live without them. So, well, that's a great yoga, that's a great Taoist, you know, yin and yang of can and can't. What's, and I love that there's so many technologists here and people who really understand coding and, you know, the entire thing. And it's like, how can this be put in the service of humanity and in the service of, and we've been using the words, I think in very, very beautiful and authentic ways, wisdom and compassion. And while none of us have the answer, I think we've been seeing a kind of cornucopia of beautiful possibilities emerging, many of which have to do with recognizing suffering and learning that it's possible to liberate ourselves from that suffering and that it's, we can't blame it on anything external or internal. It's, uh, mindfulness is all about relationality. As soon as we understand that we can rotate in relationship to the mind, the body, the breath, uh, technology, uh, your spouse or partner, your children, your parents, uh, the planet, the global warming, we c action emerges, passion emerges, compassion emerges, mindfulness emerges. Like, what else is there to do with the moment that we have.